Edward Warkul River system lies west of Daniloquin in New South Wales, between the Edward River in the north and the Murray River in the south. The system incorporates the Edward, Warkul and Nema rivers and the Merrin, Collagen and Yalakul creeks as well as many more smaller creeks and tributaries. It is a complex system of rivers, creeks and floodrunners that, when in flood, creates a massive floodplain delta of wetlands, forests and farmland covering an area of around 300,000 hectares. Uh, look, the Warkool is probably one of the most unique river systems um, in the whole Murray-Darling Basin in the fact that uh, this river here is actually the um, the bed of the, the ancestral bed of the Murray River, 30 odd thousand years ago it changed course and we've now ended up with the river being the like a, an inland delta almost. Today's Edward Walkall system owes its makeup to the occurrence of the Cadell Fault which began around 30,000 years ago. Prior to this time the old Murray River originally continued west from Mathoura along what is now Green Gully and incorporated the mid Walkall River downstream of the Thor Lake system. It was fed from the north by floodrunners, which were the forerunners of the Upper Warkool and Nema Rivers and Yalakul and Collagen Creeks. Around 25,000 years ago, the fault line between Achuka and Daniloquin eventually blocked the Murray River near Mathoura, damming flows and pushing the river north through what is now Daniloquin. This is now the Edward River. The ancient Goulburn was also blocked and eventually cut a new path around the south end of the fault line in a northwesterly direction. Approximately 8,000 years ago, the ancient Murray River eventually broke through the Bama Sandhills, the Bama Choke, heading south towards Echuca and joined the course of the ancestral Goulburn and Campaspe River. This is the path of the Murray as we now know it today. The ancient flow path of the Walkal River explains why the lower end of the Walkal River is deeper than the Murray in many places. The Edward River rejoins the Walkal River at Kyolite where it is a much larger stream that continues on to join the existing Murray River downstream of Tullibuck. These deeper holes in the Warkool create valuable fish refuges during times of low flow in the system. The Merrin and other streams cut through ancient lunette systems and form lakes in deflation basins such as Tally's Lake. If you're talking about big floods and that, you know, back in 94 and things like that, well, they would have gone everywhere except for the flood banks, there's no doubt about that. But but uh, these places like the lake here would have filled up and just ran on and, and carried on down the creeks further and, and uh, all, everything headed to the Warkool because it was a natural drain. And if the, if the Warkool really filled up full and the other rivers below it and into the Murray, it would bank right back up, to the, up into the Wadi, which, which seems unusual, but that's what it did. The Edward Warkool system incorporates the internationally recognised Central Murray Ramsar site forests of Wirai, Milawa and Kundruk Perikuta. Totalling around 80,000 hectares, these forests and wetlands are naturally inundated during high rivers and are home to a wide range of native aquatic and terrestrial plants and animals. Migratory water birds from across the world visit the wetland areas throughout the year and the Edward Walkall system is recognised as a key breeding area within the Murray-Darling Basin for native fish species due to the plentiful feed and unique habitat of the system. The system also includes a number of smaller forests managed by Forestry Corporation of New South Wales, New South Wales National Parks and Wildlife Service and private landholders. The Murray and Edward Rivers carry most of the water in the system. However, when the system incurs major flooding, water overflows to the much older and larger ancestral channels and floodplain of the Warkall system, which carry well over five times the volume of the Murray River itself. The highest flooding li living memory, um, it actually, the, the uh, Murray at Swan Hill was running around about 30,000 megs. Um, and the actual Warkall River at the bottom end, down at the, at the Murray Junction, uh, was poking around about two, 200,000 megs. Yeah, so following on from the 1956 flood, the, uh, the biggest recorded flood uh, was in 1870. And um, the volume that uh, they were talking then was somewhere around about the uh, 400, 500,000 megs. And uh, the vast uh, majority of that ended up uh, having to go through this system. Before river regulation and the construction of weirs and dams in the Murray system, the Edward and Warkall rivers and their tributaries would rise and fall with the varying seasonal flows in the Murray. 
Improved water security provided by river regulation has meant the overbank freshes that occurred in over 75% of years now only occur about 30% of the time. Flood behaviour has been significantly modified following European settlement with the construction of levees, irrigation supply channels and roads that prevent all but the very large floods from inundating the now developed floodplain. As a consequence, the significant amount of flood water that was stored on the Edward Warkel floodplain is now directed through an intensive network of floodways and carrier streams into the Murray River. Many of the wetlands located in the higher levels of the floodplain now receive environmental water via the irrigation network. Water, uh, we had real salt problems in this system or in this lower system and um, the uh, timely use of the environmental water has meant that um, as you can see along the banks here we've got regrowth, we've got new trees, um, we've got fish coming back into the system after the devastating black water events that we've had. Um, even as an irrigator it's made a difference. We can pump water when we need to instead of only when the river's good enough. Um, the benefits are just ongoing. Oh, black water was devastating. Um, virtual sterilisation of the fish and crustaceans and what other life was in the river. We had four uh, hypoxic black water events over a, a period of time. When a flood occurs, the build-up of carbon in the form of bark and leaf litter on the forest floor is mobilised with flood water and may result in a black water event. This black water is loaded with carbon and nutrients, which are the food source for the many aquatic plants and animals dependent upon the food system. The Edward Warkul is recognised as a highly productive system for biodiverse birds, fish and other fauna and receives considerable attention from research institutions investigating options to further enhance wildlife outcomes. Occasionally, blackwater occurs during periods of high temperatures, low flows or after a lengthy dry period. This increases the rate at which the organisms consuming the carbon use up the oxygen in the water, creating flows that are low in dissolved oxygen. These situations are called hypoxic blackwater events, meaning very low oxygen. The Warkel River system and tributaries provide irrigation and stock and domestic water to around 600 landholders and a number of rural communities. The economies of towns such as Warkel, Daniloquin, Moulamine, Swan Hill and Barham have historically been and still remain connected to the condition of the rivers and forests. As well as the many millions of dollars of agricultural production generated from irrigation in the area, the rivers and forests provide significant economic value to the area through the timber industry, recreational camping, fishing and tourism. The major Indigenous traditional owners of the area include the Barapa Barapa, Wamba Wamba, Yorta Yorta and Machi Machi people. Evidence of their connection to area goes back many thousands of years and is scattered throughout the system in the form of scarred trees, middens and known burial sites. Shaped over the course of thousands of years, these fault lines have recreated this mid-river delta system, created expansive red gum forests and the unique floodplain environment that we have today. Mm -hmm.